name is Anastasia. Recording is on. Is on. Welcome to the Global International Pedagogical Forum IPF 2020. My name is Alexandra, and today our guest is a Minian epidemiologist, MD, PhD of Yerevan State Medical University of the Department of Epidemiology, Armen Badalek. Hello, <clears throat> Global International Pedagogical Forum. Uh, my name is Arman Badalian. I'm an epidemiologist and thank you for the invitation and uh, having uh, me on this discussion and interview. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. So, uh, our first question is, how on how death has passed from the moment that the finger learned about the existence of coronavirus? The pandemic has spread to almost the entire world. Now, many countries are talking about the second and third wave. What is your opinion on this matter? Will there be a second or third wave? Thank you for the question. Uh, one of the most maybe popular questions regarding whether it is the first or second or third stage. Uh, in my uh, personal opinion, it's very difficult to emphasize some specific uh, first or second wave, just based on uh, peculiarities which is appropriate for these disease. <clears throat> I mean the uh, characteristics of infections and epidemiological processes, which is very typical for this coronavirus infection. Uh, based on these characteristics, it's very difficult, especially when uh, the mentioned two uh, processes uh, <clears throat> has, ha have resulted in two main points. It is a silent spread and super spread of this infection. Two results, two outcomes, let's say, which are interrelated, just based, as, as I said, on these infections and epidemic processes. This silent spread and super spread, these results lead us to uh, the point that it's very difficult to uh, delineate, to emphasize some specific first or second or third even stage. We can see that even different countries like in Australia or Israel or Japan or in Spain even, we, we can observe these uh, so-called second stage. But as I said, it's difficult to say. Even in Germany, where now we have a uh, specific this plateau with uh, low number of incidents, new cases. But if you remember, uh, on, <coughs> uh, on the background of the, the declining of cases, suddenly they have a, a, some outbreak in some region of Germany. Uh, in some meat processing plant, they have a lot of cases. From this point of view, it's again difficult to say whether we can consider it is second surge or not, or even in US, let's take. In several states, it's, it seems like a second stage, but the others, no. But to describe the whole country again, it's difficult to say whether in US second stage or not. In some states, yes, in some states, no. But in, uh, generally, it's difficult. Or in China, when they decline the numbers even to zero, now daily we have decades of cases again. And again, maybe they are not so huge, but anyway, 20, 30 cases, whether it's considered uh, as a second stage or not, it's difficult to say. Therefore, uh, I mostly refer to the one, uh, very interesting phrase done by uh, uh, in, in a very key person in this uh, uh, this field of investigation when he said that it's uh, like uh, uh, one uh, uh, one river of virus flowing yeah one river of virus flowing or as I said uh, uh, <clears throat> expert from WHO Mike Ryan he said it's like a second stage within the first uh, second stage within the first stage yeah. So it's very difficult to, as I said, it's not just a classical epidemiological second or third wave. Seems this is my opinion. Very unpredictable. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. So, uh, 
So thank you very much for the answer. Uh, well, the next is, uh, will the summer season or high air temperature somehow affect the virus? Is the virus afraid of heat or there is no food to it? Uh, previously, we, uh, with, uh, we thought that uh, it would be. But uh, just in recent experience, we understand that no such activities. I mean, uh, even now, in the middle of summer, we see in mentioned countries, uh, maybe they are located in different parts of the world. But anyway, even in Spain or even in Israel, where temperature, I think, uh, comparatively higher than other uh, hemisphere. But anyway, we, uh, we are observing now the... Uh, uh, as, as we said, the second stage, yeah, relatively, let's say, second stage, and second, uh, second wave, sorry. Uh, so, temperature has no role, I think. <clears throat> the, uh, the only thing that, uh, there are two points that we can consider. One of them is the density of population. Surely, in the cold season, the density is very high, the contacts are very high, therefore, such uh, infections, uh, air droplet infections, different caused by virus or bacteria, usually they are popular in uh, winter season, a cold season, because of the density of population and contacts. Uh, <clears throat> during the summer season, so in small areas, uh, the density of population, the, the level of contacts, comparatively low uh, with, uh, some, uh, with the winter season, with cold season. This point can uh, affect, but anyway, as I, as I said, just based on this characteristics of disease, we are observing that uh, high temperature has no effect from this. And the point, and the, another important point, uh, the ability to survive on surfaces. Uh, maybe it has secondary role, I mean, the, the, uh, way, as a way of transmission, yeah? Uh, the role of uh, surfaces. But uh, they have their old, but uh, comparatively low with air droplet uh, way of transmission. Maybe, I think, again, it's my personal opinion that maybe high temperature can affect on ability to survive on the surfaces. But as I said, because it has very low, uh, the role is very low uh, in the transmission of the disease. So therefore, again, even such effect that uh, high temperature uh, can kill these viruses, uh, this virus on the surfaces, but because such type of transmission has less role rather than air droplet mechanism of transmission or way of transmission. So again, here we haven't any uh, significant and crucial role of high temperature uh, on the transmission of this disease, I think. Thank you very much for such a cool Answer. And our next question is, what is your opinion on what the children tolerate coronavirus more easily than adults? Children, uh, surely it's a very important question because, <clears throat> thank you very much again for the question, uh, because uh, at the very beginning of uh, autumn, we know that usually in majority countries, uh, school, uh, uh, have to be open, for example, or and start the educational season. But as we see, according to the scientific literature, the role of children is not so huge, again, and their contribution is not so huge uh, in transmission. And as the percentages uh, of children, especially from zero to nine years old, again, is very low, and the contribution is very low, too. Uh, but uh, according again to the literature, scientific uh, children age of more than 12 years old, they almost they have the same almost let's say the same contribution like adults. It's very interesting point and alarm point. I think uh, this uh, it's uh, the second point very interesting that uh, sometimes when we talked about children, we have to concentrate on them but in this case we have to not forget about adults like teachers lecturers administrative parts of the schools even and uh, who are vulnerable and they are also uh, are able to catch this, this, this disease from children and have even fatal results 
So this point also is important when we think about uh, or whether to open or not schools. And the important the third point, <coughs> I think, uh, when we, for example, open schools, I think uh, in, when even I think uh, that even one child be contracted and have uh, and the children or child has or have the very serious cause of disease. I'm not speaking about uh, death uh, results of that outcome. Immediately, such points will be politicized, and for example, the government of such country will be <clears throat> criticized immediately. I think. Therefore, we have to be very, uh, very attentive, uh, very attentive, very uh, in smooth way. We have to do it uh, carefully, uh, and according to the last approach, international experts' approach. In order to decide whether to open schools or not, we have to pay attention to community, the level of community transmission in the uh, society. If it is very high, uh, the risk of opening of school is very high too from the point of view of uh, transmission of virus. So this point we have to just based on three points, as I said, and the final one, this one. If community transmission is very high, it's very difficult it's very that there is a high risk to open and according to the last <clears throat> uh, last several uh, scientific articles regarding the effect of non pharmaceutical yeah no we call it non pharmaceutical measures like mass gathering wearing of masks uh, social distancing etc from this point of view closing of school has very important role uh, uh, on on the effect on the, these non-pharmaceutical measures and just based on the recent uh, scientific uh, article which, which is, was published in journal of, Med um, journal of medical so American Medical Association uh, where they testify about effect effectiveness of closing of school and correlation between closing of school and mortality rate even in different states of US so uh, therefore the role of clothes uh, the role of schools i think is very important therefore we have to pay very uh, high level of attention and be careful uh, when we are going to open the schools okay thank you very much for the answer uh, the next question is Okay, thanks again. <clears throat> uh, at the very beginning of the outbreak, I remember there were a lot of different suggestions uh, based on uh, different homemade, I don't know, starting from garlic up to alcohol, etc., to use. But now, again, we stress on the fact that we haven't any clear evidence, scientific evidence, that such uh, homemade, let's say, products can prevent these disease. Uh, we have to rely only on scientific data. So uh, there is no any unique uh, recipe, for example, to improve our own immunity and become very stable to this disease. Therefore, uh, we have to do what we have usually do, uh, starting from uh, normal feeding, for example, uh, exercises, physical exercises, I mean, etc. Just common one way we do, no any specific one for coronavirus. Regarding um, this ultraviolet uh, lamps and radiation, uh, unfortunately, due to CDC, Centers for Disease Control Prevention, the WHO approaches, they, there is no any recommendation of using of UV lamps. But again, uh, because uh, historically, in, especially uh, in health facilities, we use different UV lamps. And again, in Journal of JAMA, uh, in the at the very beginning of the June, I remember there was an article where 
uh, was mentioned about if, uh, possible effectiveness of uh, high germicide, uh, uh, GUV it is called, this abbreviation of that, high germicide uh, uh, UV lamps uh, in their ability to destroy this virus. And uh, just recently, yesterday, uh, I have uh, seen, I, uh, I watched it by TV when they um, and there, there was a, like advertisement they uh, were such people they're speaking about a sp specific mask specific mask uh, i don't remember who's manufacturer but anyway from some foreign countries from a country uh, there was a specific mask with uv radiation inside of this <coughs> mask and they again testify about possibility to kill um, around 199 percent of all bacteria and viruses within the mask again using uv in order to say i have uh, noticed some tendency based on articles based on different uh, advertisement or etc discussions there is a <clears throat> tendency to use uh, anyway uv lamps and as i said beside that uh, why you you with the problem there was a problem uv because uh, there was a wrong tendency for example to exposed our body for example the uv lamps in order to make disinfection etc no it is completely prohibited uh, therefore uh, uv lamps only can be used historically as i said in health facilities and they have been used i know in any way but we haven't any uh, as i said scientific evidence that they are able to kill but i hope based on this recent tendencies tendencies as i have this uh, i have described <clears throat> i think uv will be used uh, completely and fully will be used uh, for disinfection and destroying this virus thank you very much professor this self resolution is effective and how to do it right self Self-isolation, you mean? <clears throat> uh, sorry, uh, uh, when you say uh, self-isolation, you mean self-isolation of uh, people who are positive for coronavirus or people who had the contact with positive case? Uh, which types? have had the contact. Yes. Both, you mean? Or, just, or <clears throat> uh, itself? Surely, uh, for example, regarding the people who have been diagnosed with these patients with, who have been diagnosed with coronavirus infection, at the very beginning of the epidemic process, uh, I remember that in majority, it de depends on countries, surely, but at the very beginning, uh, all positive, irrespectively, whether they have symptoms or not, you know, to say asymptomatic symptomatic or and symptomatic people uh, have been placed in health facilities uh, but surely over the time when the amount have been increased of such patients and depend and, uh, due to also the hard workload of health facilities uh, there was a point that already uh, almost in, uh, impossible to place them all all such positive patients placed in health facilities, especially asymptomatics. Therefore, they immediately moved to the self-isolation at home, especially, because, as I said, it's impossible to cover services regarding all of them. Therefore, uh, people, symptomatic people, even symptomatic, also can be placed for self-isolation at their home. But uh, the patients with uh severe course of disease or uh, i'm not speaking about the other complications when then there is need intubation etc artificial uh, ventilation lung etc such people uh, such patients surely must be placed in the health facilities others must be self-isolated there is no another a way of uh, solving this problem but surely who uh, they, when they placed in at home there is a high risk uh, of transmission therefore there are several very simple points they have to keep it like not to go out not to have for example visitors except healthcare providers for example not go to exercise outside i mean or for food etc 
and keep the social distancing. Uh, it should be better to be placed in separate room if it is possible, for example, etc. To keep such simple rules, and we have a lot of uh, cases when when the people uh, keep such rules, uh, they cut the further possible transmission of this virus to another healthy people. Therefore, I think we uh, depends on situation, depends on countries. But as I said, uh, we can reach the point when we have to uh, provide this self isolation, especially for asymptomatic and mild symptomatic or uh, mild symptomatic uh, patients to be self isolated at their homes. Thank you very much. Thank you, too. Our next question is, is it true that people who have had a coronavirus infection cannot get infected seconds again? Well, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the first cases have been re registered in the middle of the May in South Korea, uh, when around 200, if I'm not mistaken, uh, people who uh, get the, who got the result of PCR negative uh, so after several weeks they become PCR positive but that even at that time uh, the South Korean authorities they provide a huge investigation of people and follow-up of people who ha had contacts with uh, PCR positive uh, second times PCR positive patients and finally, uh, unfortunately, they prove that no any secondary cases among around 800 people who had uh, contacts with uh, above mentioned, as I said, uh, secondary PCR positive patients. It means even we uh, have such episode of secondary PCR positive test, it means such patients, they are not able to transmit the virus. From epidemiological point of view, it's a very important point. But anyway, uh, in different countries, if I'm not mistaken, recently in Ukraine there was a cases, etc. Uh, we have listened about such cases. In, from, uh, in epidemiology, we have special term which is called case series case series when like in like in Wuhan when the Chinese authorities declare about on December, uh, on December 31 or 2019 when they declare about new infection it doesn't mean that all cases have been registered directly in uh, 31 December surely they have been registered throughout the December one case in one place is another another hospitals etc when we call it case series, it's a very uh, popular term. Even HIV infection, AIDS have been have been uh, discovered in 1981. Again, uh, based on this case series, yeah. Uh, the same here. We what we do? We collect one another cases, compare, analyze them, and come to uh, conclusion. The same situation here. If such cases, uh, all such cases must be collected, analyzed, uh, very in, in details, collect all epidemiological anamnesis, clinical anamnesis, all details we have to collect and understand what's going on and prove that it is, it is a secondary infection. This is important, like activity. Another point is very interesting that uh, we have to understand whether uh, these two episodes, one of them or both maybe, is a result of false positive laboratory tests. Such cases also. Again, such points we have to uh, uh, we have to pay attention to such points also. And another point we have to uh, collect the ongoing now scientifically ongoing process of understanding whether this immunity after this coronavirus infection is durable or not. Because this contradictive data, 
some data uh, testify that it's not durable, the other data that it is durable and around one or two years, just recently, uh, several days ago, there was a Art, uh, there were articles regarding um, peer-reviewed but not published yet uh, from China and England when they testify that there is about possibility to have immunity around one or two years another date yeah still uh, there are a lot of uncertainties but again when we, something will become certain we use this uh, approach to finally to understand whether uh, to uh, just generally describe uh, whether it is possible to catch this disease or not, or maybe it's just personal, just uh, subjective personal characteristics, or there is a way in immunity and such person catch the disease. Uh, as I said, still uh, there are a lot of uncertainties, therefore we have to collect all these case series, uh, analyze in details, plus scientific data, whether it is durable or not, this immunity. And, about, and as I said, pay attention to, to, to the, whether it is false uh, or uh, false positive results or not. All this aggregated data uh, will, uh, will tell us about, uh, about your question, about possibility to be infected second time. Thank you very much for such a contact. Thank you, Tim. point I think thank you for question again uh, this point I think still um, mm, uh, let's say again we have to uh, make some historical excurs especially again at the very beginning when we uh, hadn't tests or the or maybe we had we had but the amount was were very low and ability to test were very low uh, currently, I think this problem has been resolved. Uh, but at the very beginning, I know that there are a lot of tests or manufacturers uh, when the, the we call it uh, specificity and sensitivity of this test. How many people uh, they can detect who are truly ill and vice versa. They can reject when we call it specificity. When, when we reject the existence of disease and they are, there is a truly no infection. From this sensitivity and specificity of tests, we had problems, surely, and the quality is very low. But now I think there are a lot of companies that will produce very high quality tests, whether we, they can be rapid or not. Uh, same test, I mean uh, PCR test. I'm speaking about PCR testing. Uh, and the quality is very high, I think. Another point uh, that in different countries can be problem to collect this data, collect this data from the laboratories who provide PCR tests to provide, uh, to assess the ability of these tests, whether they have, for example, specific biosecurity level to provide this test, licensing procedures, etc. Uh, it's another logistic point that we have to do in order to make sure that the result, the quality of their, just not the test itself, but the providing of this testing in the laboratory directly is very high. We have to make sure. It's another point. But just itself, there are a lot of, now we have a lot of different, very high quality tests. So the end PCR testing is considered to be anyway the uh, gold standard. Even regarding your previous question, when so when we have a positive result, we know they are so sensitive that they can even find the small amount of this virus, just particles, not virus itself. Therefore, I mentioned when secondary time they can be positive, but now they are not able to transmit this disease. Why? Because due to this very high quality sensitive PCR testing, we uh, detect only particles of virus, not virus itself completely. And therefore, they are not able to transmit. Coming back to this point, 
as I said, we have a lot of high quality PCR testing and it's considered to be as a gold standard, irrespectively even uh, of their level of uh, sensitivity and specificity. Because we have, anyway, we uh, have cases of uh, false positive results too, but anyway, PCR is considered to be the gold standard. About uh, antibody testing, we know that currently still, because we don't know, as I said, whether this immunity is durable. We don't know about specific high level of antibody titers in the blood, and especially uh, not only titers itself, but the ability to neutralize this virus. The level of antibody which are able to neutralize this virus. Still, the, here we have uncertainties. Therefore, based on this point, uh, uh, Antibody testing, according to the WHO recommendations, usually we provide only for research activities, only research. In very rare cases, when we, we, uh, we have some problems with PCR testing, clinical manifestation of disease, etc., maybe in rare cases, antibody tests can help us as a supportive, just support clinical, but in rare cases. In other we, as, as I said, we antibody tests we use only for research activities. Thank you very much for the answers. Um, well, uh, the next question, which is uh, probably every person is very important about, is uh, when will the vaccine appear? Is it true uh, that the common for the development of the vaccine can be to your part? that the virus is such a sensitive mutation. The Libyan team, which is originated in Wuhan, detects extreme quickly, and the form that is now present in America and Europe, for example, is significantly more infectious than the original one. Uh, Alexander, sorry, could you please repeat the last, last part? Last part, okay. The Libyan team, which is originated in Wuhan, mutated mm -hmm. quickly. And the form that is now plaguing America and Europe, for example, is significantly more infectious than the, than the original virus. Ah, okay. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> according to the recent data, uh, thank you for question again, I always forget to say it. Uh, according to the recent data, uh, there are two main lineages, we call it lineages, like, let's say, simply lines. They are virus A and B, mostly. And the, according to the current approach, uh, in Europe, penetrates another this B lineage. The, uh, especially B1, we call it B, uh, the lineage of the virus, let's say, a line of the vi virus, which considered to be more, uh, has more replicative, more replicative activities and more transmissible let's say, more transmissible rather than Wuhan strains at the very beginning of the December of 2019. It means uh, virus is able to be transmitted and this reproductive, uh, basic reproductive number, we call it R0, therefore is very high, was very high in Europe, let's uh, remember the Italy, Spain, etc. Uh, these two lineages main uh, they have with sub lineages, let's say, uh, and surely mutation always is uh, taking place in the virus according to the uh, data of uh, scientists from Netherlands. They testify about possibility of a mutation even uh, every two weeks, but fortunately. Uh, such mutation, uh, they influence upon only the, re the replicative, as I said, activity of virus, how they are multiplying, yeah? Re replication multiplying is almost the same. Uh, the ability to be multiplied, uh, be replicative. And again, it, uh, in its own turn, it uh, uh, affect to the level of transmission. They become, this virus, due to this point, become more transmissible. Unfortunately, such mutation, they haven't any influence on, uh, vi on the ability of virus to be more virulent. Virulent, it means ability to cause severe disease up to uh, fatal case. 
uh, on such activity, fortunately, this mutation has no any role. And therefore, from this point of view, uh, the conception of using a vaccine is more important. Currently, we know that more than 140 uh, companies are working on it. On the, uh, around 25, more than 25 countries, uh, they transform to the clinical trial phase when they provide this they experiment on these trials, let's say, let's say trial, trials on humans. Uh, I think it takes several months. Uh, and we have to know that uh, maybe there are a lot of uh, needs or this designation about uh, harmful effect. Um, there are, we know that, unfortunately, uh, there is a lot of uh, false opinions uh, generated by anti-vaxxers, etc. But anyway, we have to rely on scientific data and we have to make sure that this, uh, the upcoming vaccine or vaccines, uh, they will be very effective and safe, I think, because one of the most interesting, important points that when we, when we will fail on this field of investigation, it immediately compromises the other vaccines too. Besides that, uh, all over the world there is a low due to this COVID-19, uh, especially COVID-19, there was a, uh, a low coverage of immunization against different diseases. Therefore, uh, each day we can anticipate even uh, registration of one or another cases of diseases which against which we provide our routine vaccination because of this low coverage. And, and if we failed this vaccination process, as I said, it will immediately compromise and make their its own influence on other vaccines too. And it will be, I think, catastrophe. Therefore, all authorities different, whether it is the Food Drug Administration or CDC or WHO, special or local administrative authorities, they have to be very careful. They have to make very uh, <clears throat> high level standards. Maybe, uh, surely it takes around three, five, up to 10 years, uh, general uh, longevity, it's a general longevity of vaccine manufacturing. But due to these modern platforms, uh, even we have such term like uh, pandemic paradigm, we call it regarding these new platforms, uh, of vaccine uh, manufacturing when we can evade some bureaucratic issues some uh, based on these new platforms uh, we can escape different even biochemical process like fermentation or uh, cultivation etc when we usually do for other vaccines and gain the time such approaches also exist as i said due to due to these new platforms but anyway irrespectively of new platforms, uh, new types of vaccine, etc., we have to pay attention to, to the safety and immunogenicity of this vaccine. Otherwise, we failed not only this, but the whole uh, immunization program all over the world. Thank you very much for your answer. And this will start our last question. Is it possible oh. to infect the person who has already had COVID-19 with other variants of the same virus. Shouldn't immunity be developed up to recovery? Thank you, Alexander, for this question. I think this question is related to the previous one when we talked about a possibility to, uh, to be contracted again. Yeah, when we talked about, as I said, there are different data. Uh, we know that uh, in recent, uh, in last article, uh, last journal, we see the published data of Spain Scientists, when they mentioned about uh, a low level and the, uh, decreasing amount of antibodies among uh, infected person, when they investigate uh, several thousands uh, patients. Uh, but as I said, uh, just recently, we have a data from China independently and another one from UK when they testified the possibility of these uh, uh, the long, about, about possibility to have a little bit of comparatively long immunity. But um, another point also I want to add here that usually we 
uh, even in Spain, they measure the titers, the titers of antibodies. But let's uh, uh, recollect again that regarding this infection, we have uh, uh, cellular immunity too, like TBT, especially T cells immunity, which is very important uh, and uh, can immediately uh, be generated and uh, protect us. Therefore, such points also is important. And as I said, the data regarding these possible secondary infections must be collected, compare with these immunological statuses, and understand what's going on with this. But again here, uh, as I said, the role of vaccines is very important here, because if we, at the end of this all horrible situation, we declare that immunity is very low, the titer of antibodies uh, very quickly uh, declined and cellular immunity has no any role, for example, based on vaccination, based on just vaccine itself, I think we are able to control immunity because manufacturing of the vaccine, uh, it takes us uh, opportunity to add different adjuvants, for example, we have such uh, different chemicals uh, which uh, generate Im immunity, uh, except just different antigens with our, you know, which are in the vaccine. We have these specific chemicals, which are called adjuvants, which uh, stimulate immunity in the uh, in the body of the in the organism who have been injected. So uh, by vaccines, we can control. Even we can make different doses. We can different schemes okay of the vaccination and using these techniques we can control this immunity and to tell the truth is my personal opinion again i think uh, even with mutation process uh, coronavirus uh, will take uh, the scenario which is very typical for influenza grip influenza uh, when every year we know that influenza virus uh, has been mutated and but we immediately collect information from the two hemispheres and immediately produce specific vaccine i think even in this bad scenario with coronavirus with, with mutation with uh, weighing immunity having the vaccine uh, having this conveyor belt let's say in manufacturing process we immediately can create specific vaccine against uh, this uh, virus but as i said uh, just very at the very beginning we have to as a pl platform and the foundation of that we have to have this safe and very uh, immunogen with high level immunogenicity vaccine after that we can just modify and adapt to the current uh, situation and very imp important point at the end i want to at sometimes I, I have listened about uh, mis again one misinformation. Then when different people specify that, for example, if natural immunity, let's take the scenario that immunity is very low and antibody titers will be declined, etc. Based on this, they said that if natural immunity is low, how we can produce vaccine? I want to add that there are a lot of different diseases like tetanus like pneumococcal disease, hemophilus influenza type B virus, papilloma, papilloma virus. These are diseases when naturally we haven't, let's say we haven't any immunity after natural infection, but by, by vaccination, we provide very strong and durable immunity. So the vaccine is very important for I think yes, yes, it's a main point because such diseases uh, which are very popular as I say, which were transmitted through the air droplets mechanism of transmission, way of transmission, which we call it uh, respiratory diseases, huh? respiratory diseases, like diphtheria, measles, mumps, rubella, uh, etc., uh, whooping cough, etc., all of them we can control only by vaccines. Okay. For example, uh, intestinal infections like cholera or typhoid fever, etc., even having a vaccines, hepatitis A, for example, 
even having vaccines, uh, it's difficult to control them because mostly they depend on social economic conditions. When we improve social economic conditions, uh, a probability of having to register such disease is very low. But for such diseases, as I mentioned, respiratory, diphtheria, etc., for these viruses or bacteria, it doesn't matter uh, which person they affect, whether it is benevolent in high um, high uh, income countries or in low income countries, it doesn't matter for them. Therefore, they don't depend on social economic mostly conditions, mostly, let's say. And we can control only, we can control them only based on these vaccinations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Honorable Professor, we do appreciate that you take the time to participate in our interview for our day. Thank you very much. For your Thank you. Thank, Thank you, too. Thank you for the invitation and stay in touch. <laughs> Thank you. Be careful and kind. Thank you.